What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This is Coach Joe with Heartletics.com, and this is going to be a, a different one for everybody, honestly. This is going to be um, something different that we're going to do going forward, where it's going to be kind of like a Q&A style, where, you know, inside of the coaching community groups, you know, here at Heartletics, we asked all the members, you know, if anybody has any questions, and then also inside of our, pre, our free private um Facebook community group, you know, where you can just search, simply search up, you know, fat loss coaching by Heartletics. Uh, you got to be a guy, you know, just FYI, if you want to join that group. And uh, we asked everybody inside there, does anybody have any questions? So for today's episode, which is going to be a podcast, it's going to be shared into the Facebook community group, and it's going to be published on the YouTube channel as well. We're actually going to be going over some questions, some really good questions for you guys. But I figured let's, uh, let's start off the conversation with maybe celebrating some wins and uh, Brian, I know you said that you have a, a pretty big win, man, that you want to share with everybody. Would you mind unmuting yourself and then uh, share with us some of these wins? Yeah, definitely. So this morning, I know uh, we, we try not to use the scale every day because it's not when we weigh every Sunday, but I do anyway, just to kind of keep an eye on everything. But this morning, I weighed in at 303 and a half pounds, and that's almost 17 pounds since I've started my journey here. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. So. Give, give everybody a rundown, man, because that's awesome. How long have you been on the coaching program for, you should say? I, I, I think it was, I started the pre, the prep week, August. I want to say I started in August 26th, I believe, or 22nd. So it's been, this is the start of my fourth week, basically. of But my first week of actually being in the program, but I had three prep weeks. Yeah, let's explain that, right? For anybody that might be listening to this, either on the podcast or the Facebook group or maybe the YouTube, explain a little bit more about prep weeks, right? I, I talk about it, you know, Coach Mark talks about it, but hearing from a client, why don't you kind of talk about your experience real quick before we dive into, you know, all these questions. Do you mind doing yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, in the beginning, when you sign up, uh, you, you fill out your meal plan and then you, and then you guys created a, a workout plan for me and a meal plan and it's a guideline. And then you just try to stick to that during the prep week, because as I was taught, you know, there's so many things that you have to learn so many questions. And so we, when we start, we don't start right away. Cause we want to, we want to start when we're ready to start. So that way we hit the ground running and there's no, we're, there's no like missing up or messing up. So it's yeah. gone exactly how you said it would. So. Yeah. And so let me ask you this, right? So if let's say you got started, right, on, you know, the let's say a Friday you got signed up and we were going to start day one of coaching, right, day one on the following Monday, you know, because, you know, Coach Katrina, she's really fast. Coach March really fast at creating the workouts. Usually within 24 hours, right, you're already hearing back from me with that personal loom video going over yeah. everything and then setting up that call with Coach Mark for the onboarding. Let's say we didn't give you prep weeks, right? Let's say, you know, you got signed up Friday. We finished everything for you uh, Saturday sent you over the video, you talked to Coach Mark on Sunday, do you think you would be fully prepared 210% before starting oh, no. on Monday? No way. There's no way. Um, you give us a lot of information, obviously, and if we followed everything to the T, it would be fine. But it's a learning process. It's a new app. I mean, everything's new. Um, and then you have to shift your mindset a lot. So that's that's the key there is getting on board with, hey, just follow the steps. Don't make it bigger than it is. And, and I've learned that. Just do what you're supposed to do. Don't make it bigger than you need to and reach out to the community. And it's been amazing. So, dude, that's do you want to just take over the rest of the episode? Because <laughs> like what you said right there was beautiful, brother. <laughs> Hands down, man. Um, I appreciate you saying that, man. Um, yeah. I'm going to answer your question now, which is really cool. So, um, let me actually mute you just in case you know, you know, perfect. Awesome. So, that was awesome, Brian. Thank you for that. So me and Mark, now we're going to touch base now into a little bit of these questions and they're really good. So I would highly encourage everybody stay until the very end. Um, typically for the next 20, 25 minutes, we're going to be diving into some certain questions. And I'll say for anybody listening in that if you guys are looking to, you know, some of these questions are, you know, curb the late night, you know, cravings. Um, show of hands, does anybody want to know a little bit more about that? I mean, I definitely do because I fall into that trap. Um, a lot of guys, you know, saying, hey, get rid of the beer belly, right? Get rid of the gut. You know, how long is it going to take to get from 30% body fat down to 12% body fat, right? One of our clients, Chad, asked that. Um, and then Bobby, I don't know who Bobby is, but he's in the private Facebook group. He has a really good question. Guys, I'm, I'm 67 years old. My metabolism is slow as a snail. <laughs> what do you say? What should I do, right, to get some help? So, 
if anybody is looking to obviously lose some weight, but obviously improve on overall health, this might be a really good episode to stay into the very end till. So let's go to the first one, which is from our man, Brian. And Mark, how we'll do this is um, I'll kind of talk about the question. I'll give my answer and then I'll have you kind of, you know, hop in as well and kind of share your viewpoints because obviously a lot of people know Mark, but if you're tuning in for the first time, he started off as a client, he lost over 90 pounds, he's now a coach and he's living his best life ever, would you say? 100%, yeah. Awesome. Couldn't be so, happier. It's awesome. So with Brian, he asked this question about, you know, why should or I should not take ashwagandha, you know? And so basically Brian's going through the course right now and I told him about stress. So for anybody listening in, right, the seven essential fat loss habits for success that we go over inside of our coaching program is, you know, calories, macros, strength training, your needs, which stands for your non-exercise, activity thermogenesis, hydration, stress, right, which we're going to go into, and recovery, aka sleep. And so when it comes to stress, I always recommend, you know, that if you're underneath a lot of stress, first and foremost, try to find a holistic approach first, right? Like maybe meditation. Um, I think what's very valuable about, you know, the community group, you know, that I would say, Mark, is the fact that, you know, there's guys in there that I can go to for support. Uh, how many times do we see guys in there say, hey, I got a bad day, guys, or I need some motivation, right? Or I struggled yesterday, like, what should I do? Or what can I do? Right? And just getting that off your chest, I would say that helps out tremendously. You know, I feel like as guys, like, we have a lot of pressure on us, maybe pressure from our spouses, pressure from, you know, work, whatever the case may be, stress, everything like that, it kind of adds up. And at times when we're underneath a lot of stress, it could be jeopardizing our fat loss progress. So anyways, when you are underneath a lot of stress, your body's, you know, natural stress hormone called cortisol is then elevated. And when you're underneath a lot of stress, it's very hard for your body to burn body fat, to lose weight, you know, effectively. So ashwagandha is a herbal supplement that I like. But I will say this, you know, because Brian asked, like, hey, do I need it? I'm not underneath a lot of stress. Like, should I take it? And Brian answered the question, no, don't. Like, if you can go through life and, and burn body fat and live healthier without taking any supplements, do it. Now, protein powder, I don't really call that a supplement, even though it's processed food. But you see what I'm saying? Like, you know, just the pills and all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, most of these supplements, like testosterone boosters, it's a big one, right? A lot of guys think, oh, I struggle with low T, right? I'll just pop in some testosterone boosters. It's the same thing as coffee, right? How many of you guys have, you know, start off having your first cup of coffee ever? Maybe you're 15, 16, and you're, you're wide awake, right? Amazing. Same thing with having an energy drink. But now you can drink a whole pot and still go to sleep, right? Like right afterwards. Your body builds up that immunity to it. So when it comes down to the ashwagandha, Brian, I would say, don't even worry about it, man. Especially if you're not underneath a lot of stress. Now, sure, there are, you know, studies that show that ashwagandha does help with testosterone levels. But at the end of the day, the best way to burn body fat effectively, or excuse me, the best way to increase your testosterone levels naturally is by just burning body fat. And Brian, you know, shake your head or give me a thumbs up. Have you been doing that so far? Without ashwagandha, right? Right, now, this is very key. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Right? I want everybody to write that down on a sticky note somewhere and just post it everywhere. If you're seeing progress, right? Small progress even, right? Fat loss isn't linear, but you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, Mark, let me ask you a question, man. What are your thoughts on, you know, like if you're underneath a lot of stress, because I know with you, it's a lot with the mindset, the meditation, all that stuff. Give us a, a quick little, you know, um, some feedback about what do you feel like is valuable for if anybody's underneath a lot of stress and what they can do to help themselves out with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're under a lot of stress, your body is like kind of permanently in that fight or flight mode. You're going to kind of hold on to things, um, you know, physically and mentally. And, and that's not helpful, you know, in either direction. So for me, you know, a couple of things that have really helped as far as, um, you know, uh, processes to get rid of that stress, um, gratitude, right? Um, just focusing on what it is that you're thankful for. And everyone, you know, you may be under so much stress that it takes you a little bit of digging to find that thing you're grateful for, but everyone has something to be grateful for. You woke up in the morning, you know, it's another day, uh, you've got something to be grateful for. So, um, you know, that is a huge um, step as far as, um, you know, just getting that mindset out of that fight or flight mode. Um, and then meditation, you know, you mentioned it earlier, but, um, it's just such a great way to kind of declutter, you know, all that stuff up there. Half the time, the things that you're stressed about are 
worries that will never come to fruition. They're just things in your head that you know you've built up, you've given them um, you know an unnecessary amount of focus on. You know, kind of throwing yourself out of balance. And meditation helps kind of just get some of that out of your head, and you know, just focus on you know your breathing, your your current state of being, and and you know the, the moment, the actual moment, as opposed to worrying about future stuff that's not going to happen. Absolutely. I also, you know, quick little thing, shout out to you. You posted in the Facebook group one day, um, if it's stressing you out for what, more than five minutes or it's not going to change the next five, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you repeat that? Because I don't it Basically, wanna... if, it, if, if you're worried about something that, you know, in a short amount of time from now is going to not have any bearing on your life, then there's no sense worrying about it because you're, 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 just, you're just making yourself sick for nothing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. Let's go to the next question. So the next one is by Chad, right? He's on the program. Hannah and his wife, Hannah, you know, they're doing it together, which is awesome, right? Creating sustainable habits, not just for themselves, but also for their family, right? For their kids, leading better by example. And that's what we truly, you know, admire the most. So he asked, hey, how long will it take to go from 30% body fat down to 12% body fat? And then Tim, inside of the Facebook community group, he also asked, like, how do you lose belly fat slash the gut, right, slash the beard belly? So let's just combine the two because I'm pretty sure it's going to talk about the same thing. And um, I'll say it like this. So, Chad, um, if you're listening in and I'm probably going to send this over to you as a, a good reference since I'm answering your question, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Nobody knows, right? There are so many different factors that go into play. Um for example, right? Like there's plenty of guys that they get to the sticking points of, let's say, I don't know, like 17, 18% body fat. And they don't see that number drop, right? It takes a long time, right? Like it, they have to keep on chugging away at it and it can get very discouraging for somebody, right? Especially when they're seeing that, you know, they're looking at their body fat, but right. And Jeremy Wade, I know that you're on the call. You might not see it in your body fat. You might not see it in the number on the scale, but your progress photos, like Jeremy Wade just posted a shirtless photo with him with his back, right? I'm getting kind of jealous over here, right? <laughs> like <laughs> that's what it boils down to. So even though, right, you might not see the number on the scale, which doesn't really matter too much at all, um, but the body fat, right, even though that's not going down or it's slowly, look into forms of other progress, right? Because at the end of the day, like, yes, we all want to see the number, right? Body fat goes down, but really boil down to this. If there was no fat loss calculator, if there was no scale weight, how do you look and how do you feel with your shirt off? That's where the confidence is going to come from. That's where the longevity, that's what's going to set the mood and the tone for the rest of the day. You know, when you wake up and you look yourself in the mirror, and especially if you're focusing on some of the mindset coaching trainings that we do, like affirmations, right, and stuff like that, and visualization and just goal setting, it could really set your mindset up for success for the remainder of the day. So, Chad, I, I hate to be very broad, but nobody's going to know. I will say this, though, right? Like, myself and my team, we're very, very good at what we do. So, if you are ever struggling or worried or anything like that, just know that, you know, you have Coach Katrina, you have myself, you have Coach Brian, you have Coach Mark, and plus everybody inside of the, you know, community group here on the app is constantly going to be supporting you. Us and the other coaches, we're going to be looking at your data. We're going to be letting you know when to make adjustments and how to make adjustments based on your trends. But I will say this, if let's say like it's a slow moving needle, then so be it. Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be three different types of body fat, you know, drops, right? D different individuals when it comes to burning body fat. And Tim, I know you asked about losing the body fat, you know, like in a specific area. So let me just go off that real quick first, right? Two really good analogies. I, I love analogies because one is simple, right? Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. It sticks in your head. It's it's sustainable, right? It's it's retainable. It's going to stay there. So, Tim, to answer your question about how to lose, you know, belly fat. Well, I'll put it to you like this. Let's say there was a big pool, right? And let's say my little son, Oakley, he's three years old. He has a little bucket and he's at the end of the pool, right? And he's dipping in that bucket. He's putting it into the pool and then tossing it out into the concrete on the side. Tim, what's going to happen to that water, right? That's inside that pool. Is the body of the water going to be flat and then there's going to be a dip, right, wherever he's dumping out the water? Absolutely not, right? Like, it's going to all drop down. So with that being said, our belly fat is always that hardest, lowest, like, that's, you'll, I'll put it to you like this, right? I'm not sounding sound rude, but you'll never see somebody with a fat face, fat arms, fat legs, and they have a six-pack, 
right? That person does not exist in this world, okay? <laughs> so at the end of the day, just understand that it is a slow moving process, but as long as you just continue to keep on going and stay consistent, you will be successful. Now, here's the three different types, right? Of body fat trends, right? Per individual. And I'm the most complicated one. That's why I don't step on the scale and I don't check my body fat percentage anymore because it's very irritating and discouraging. Person A, okay, I will say this, there is a first, fourth one called Mark who just <laughs> constantly crushes it, but realistically, person A, right, this guy right here, let's say he's 200 pounds, he want to get down to 180 pounds, he is going to start off right there at 200 pounds, he's then going to lose some weight, hit a little plateau, lose some weight, hit a little plateau, lose some weight, hit a little plateau, lose some weight, hit a little plateau. If you guys hear the dog barking, ignore her, all right? Mark, did that individual, did they lose weight every single week? No, of course not. Okay, cool. Did they also get from 200 pounds down to 180 pounds? 100%. So they reached their goal. Even though they didn't see success, right? They still reached their goal, right? It's staying consistent with it. It's Person the two, direction, not the, not the week by week. Correct. Person two, right? Person B. This person's also 200 pounds. They want to get down to 180 pounds. What's going to happen is they're going to start off here. They're going to lose some weight, gain some weight, lose some weight, gain some weight. I see Jeremy raising his hand. Lose some weight, gain some weight, lose some weight, gain some weight, lose some weight. Mark, right? What happens? Did they lose weight every single week? No, but they got where they wanted to be in the end. Person three. Joe Calari, right? Very frustrating. And if you're like this, don't even step on the scale. Just wake up in the morning, take your shirt off, look at yourself in the mirror, give yourself a high five and get out the door and get to work, right? This is exactly my type of body fat percentage and trends, the T. 200 pounds, 180 pounds. I will, right, do whatever I have to do and this is exactly what happens. I will lose some weight and then I'll gain some weight and then I hit up a little plateau, right? And then I'll lose some weight and then I gain some weight and then I hit a plateau, right? And then I lose some weight and then I gain some weight and then I hit a plateau. So realistically, my body fat drops maybe 1% to 2% per month if I'm in a fat loss phase in terms of my lifestyle right now. But at the end of the day, right, does that individual mark, did they lose weight every single week? No, no. Did they reach their goals though? Yes. Yeah. So Tim, right, big pool, Dumping out, right? I think about my son, right? Right? I know it's kind of weird, but anyways, like, guess what, right? You can't spot reduce belly fat, okay? Chad, hey, slow moving needle, but as long as you don't give up, you'll be successful, plain and simple. Trust me on this one, right? Like, don't get so tied into the numbers because at the end of the day, those numbers affect who you are internally, emotionally. And when you start dictating the number on the scale or the number on the body fat percentage and letting that dictate how you feel the rest of the day, it could be horrible, right? And that's a very unhealthy relationship. And I know a lot of people struggle with that unhealthy relationship with food also, which maybe we could talk about that next week, right? Because we'll have more time. But don't even look into that. At the end of the day, how do you look? How do you feel? That's what matters the most, right? And how do you see yourself? And are you in that step-by-step -step progress of becoming the best version of yourself, right? And does it have to be hard? No. 1% better each and every day. That's all we strive for. Mark, we got 10 minutes on this, you know, podcast right now. Real quick, what do you want to say to either Chad or Tim? Just real quick, um, you know, basically what you were saying about um, at a certain point, you've got to just look at the mirror. You've got to look at how you feel because that number on the scale, I've hit a point, you know, at the, in this journey where, you know, the scale can't just keep doing that anymore. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't have any place to go. Um, and so, it, you know, um, it, that can be frustrating because I'm so used to that mindset, but I'm starting to realize that even though the scale may not change in directions that I want, I still see the positive direction in the mirror. So I'm really, really now, I mean, I've always tried to have this mentality, but now I'm really just pulling away from being fixated on that scale and realizing that it's, it's not the be all end all. Um, there's just so many other factors to look at, you know, that, that, are the indicator. Yeah, I always say like this. <clears throat> um, you can be 200 pounds, 40% body fat, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, no, no energy, no confidence. Or you can be 200 pounds, you know, 15% body fat. You got some abs, right? You're very healthy. 
that means it doesn't matter too much about the number on the scale, right? It matters everything about just internal health and that progression towards that. Um, let's do this one. We have time for maybe one more question. And um, Tony, I'm going to ask you. Yeah, I'm going to ask you, brother. Um, why don't you unmute yourself real quick? I'm going to ask you which question we should talk about for this last one, okay? And then Mark will talk about it for maybe five minutes, and then we'll kind of do the outro. Um, Sounds good. This is, this is definitely a lot of fun. I know we, we dove into a lot of these. So, Tony, real quick, brother, um, should we talk about how to curb the late night cravings? Or do you want to learn about, you know, how Bobby can get help? He's 67 years old and he's looking to improve his metabolism. It's slow as a snail. Or Seth asked in the Facebook group, um, he said, hey, about like low impact exercises, how beneficial are they? Because basically he had back surgery and has struggles with the bad back and maybe he doesn't want to, you know, lift heavy or whatever the case may be, but yet he wants to improve on his health. Tony, what do you think would be a good one we should talk about? Unmute yourself. <laughs> there you How go. about now? You're good. There you go. Better. Well, I really, I really want to help Bobby because I know how he feels. I'm older and... You think like, wow, can you lose weight even when you're older? And the answer is yes. But then the low impact one is one that I always, my personal self always thought was completely invaluable that I learned was not the case. They're both really good. Let's help Bobby first. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about Bobby. So Bobby said in the Facebook group, you know, which if anybody's listening and stay tuned for this part right now, just understand that if you guys just go to Facebook Type in, you know, the group section, Heartletics. I'm pretty sure you'll see like men, 40 plus, fat loss coaching, Heartletics. Feel free to join in, guys. It's for men only, right? If you're over the age of 40, you're struggling to lose body fat, feel free to go to Facebook. It's a free group. It's just private. Answer a few questions. I'll accept you in. And you'll see a lot of like, you know, content and everything like that as far as, you know, what we do and potentially how we can help somebody out. So Bobby asked the question, right, as far as I'm 67 years old. Uh, my metabolism is slow as a snail. And um, what would you say as far as, you know, getting better at health? Um, Coach Mark, I want to ask you first before I dive in, okay? Because we got maybe like three minutes each, okay? What would you say to Bobby? I'd say that, um, the first thing I'd probably talk about is the importance of protein. Um, you know, protein is uh, higher on the thermogenic food scale, uh, meaning your body works a lot harder to digest it, to metabolize it. And so it's going to help you burn fat, speed up your metabolism, build muscle. Basically, it's, it's kind of the, the building blocks of what we do um, is, is protein. Um, I love it. I love it. Brian, unmute yourself. I, I, let's do this for the last question, because you guys have been through the coaching program or are currently going through the coaching program. I'm pretty, uh, pretty confident in what you guys know about metabolism. Even Brian, like one week into the program, I'm, I'm getting ready to do your check-in video at some point today. Um, I'm pretty confident that you know a good amount about metabolism. But real quick, Brian, what would you say a quick 30 to 60 second spiel? Uh, what would be a good tip for Bobby to improve on his metabolism, even at 67? Uh, increase your steps daily. Um, your NEAT, which is the non, or was it non-exercise activity. So go for walks. You know, throw some push-ups in, some sit-ups, do whatever you can to stay as active as you can um, on the days that you're not working out, and then hydration. Get 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 a gallon of water down. I love it. Jeremy, what about you, brother? <laughs> Man, same thing. You got to get that hydration in, the steps in. The protein, I think, has been the biggest thing for me, most important, and something that I still got to work on, sleep. Man, making sure you've got a good sleep pattern, rest pattern, those healthy habits that we all got to have. Yeah, I, I know you're smiling because I, I was pretty hard on you on that check-in in that part, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I don't normally do check-ins, but when I do, I can be a little bit, you know, straightforward to the point. And for everybody, you know, listening in, Jeremy did his check-in for him, and he mentioned about how he's struggling with his sleep. And so I'm working with Jeremy like, hey, what can we do to improve on this? So don't worry, Jeremy, you're in good hands. Tony, you, brother, what could, you know, something that Bobby do to improve his metabolism at 67? You're muted, brother. You're muted. There you go. I, honestly, I think probably for me, it's always been consistency and those steps have been, you know, you don't have to lift heavy in order to lose weight. 
I think that's for, for me, that was what I learned the most just going through the program. I can always lose weight as long as I manage my protein, get my steps in and just stay even keel and just work for consistency. So simple, 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 simple. simple. Gabe, what about you, brother? What is a, a quick little 30 seconds to 60 seconds to help Bobby improve his metabolism? Stress management. Make sure that, you know, you don't let these little things get the best of you. You know, be grateful for what you have and uh, keep your head up. You know, life is good. There's nothing to throw away. Just enjoy your life. I love it. I love it, brother. Thank you. All right. So, um, Bobby, if you're going to be listening to this, which I'm going to you know, post inside the Facebook group, so hopefully you do. You're 67 years old. Matt Perry, he's inside of our coaching program right now. He's, I think, 67 or 68. But it's pretty much the exact same way on how I train and coach, you know, Matt Perry. It's, hey, what are the exercises that we should be doing that are beneficial not only for our body, but our schedule, where we start developing some of that muscle, right? That lean muscle tissue. And don't think about muscle being all big and bulky or you have to go to the gym. Matt works out at home. He has an adjustable bench now. He has some dumbbells and he's loving it, right? It's building that muscle underneath the fat. Second is understanding this, right? This is very important for understanding you know, somebody's metabolic rate. It's okay to step a few steps backwards if it's going to help us progress forward in life. Meaning that if you have a slow metabolism, which Bobby, you mentioned, quote unquote, slow as a snail. You said that, not me, right? I would say, hey, focus on eating more food, eating more of the right foods, right? And eating, you know, more protein that people mention. And Bobby, I mean, for you, brother, like, I have so many different fat loss, you know, free guides that you can download. You know, there's a snack guide, there's a fast food guide, there's the essential seven fat loss habits guide. Like, I think what you just need to do is maybe go to Heartletics and like check out a few of those because all of those are in there on how to improve on that. And then the last thing is kind of like what Gabe said, don't give up, right? You know, I think a lot of people, you know, what I immediately said or heard when you said this is, hey, I put an age right? As far as, oh, I'm old, I'm 67, I can't do something and I have a slow metabolism. It's slow as a snail. Well, why speak that in existence, brother? Right? Like, like at the end of the day, words have power, you know, like change the story. you like, at the end of the day, like you're not dead. You're able to get on Facebook, reply back to a message. So it's like, change the script up, say, Hey, I'm 67 years young and I want to improve my life and have more energy. And I'm focused on making some changes today. What is the best way to improve on that, right? A little switching of the script like that within your own internal story is going to have a better outlook perspective. And that's like literally hands down, I would say, the golden nuggets of Heartletics is how do you see yourself? How do you change your story within? How do you really focus on internally that mindset? Because I'll say it like this, you know, like, yes, our coaching program is the meal plans, the workouts, the check-ins, the community group, but like, that's all features and fun stuff, right? It's who you become during that process, that mental internal shift. That is where you truly become the best version of yourself, that 2.0 that you're after. Because once you change who you are mentally, that's where you'll start seeing those changes physically. All right, guys, we got like 30 seconds before I have to wrap things up. Um, if anybody feels like unmuting themselves and for anybody listening in on the outside, right? What would you guys, I guess, you know, Mark, maybe you want to say something like, Quick 30 seconds, not long at all. Anybody listening on the outside, what could they do something today to kind of benefit themselves for tomorrow? Uh, definitely the simple things that they can start doing to benefit themselves for tomorrow. I'm going to give three things. One, get some steps in, just start walking and moving. Two, drink more water, right? Those are simple things that make a big difference. And number three, hit our website, go to heartletics.com. Uh, and uh, you can see a free fat loss guide. You can see a free video. You're going to learn how uh, you can completely change your life. You know, you talk about, you know, 67, 50 years old, hey, you're approaching 50. My life changed in every possible way. If I can do it, so can everyone else. Love it. Brian, what about you, brother? Yeah, I mean, for anybody that's on the fence right now about whether or not you should just – should schedule a discovery call i just say do it man up and like if you're not sure what you're doing it's a reason why you want to schedule uh, schedule a discovery call sorry my son's going crazy <laughs> um, but but basically yeah don't don't mess around just if you knew what you're doing you would have already done it and it had already been successful at it so 
make it easy on yourself. Just buy into the process, schedule discovery calls, see if it fits for you and make your, make it simple for yourself. Straightforward. Simple. I love it. Jeremy, what about you, brother? 30 seconds. Plain and simple. Commit. Can't, you can't just stand with no action. You can plan on doing it. How many Mondays have we put together that, yo, know, next Monday I'll start, next Monday I'll start. Just commit. Commit to making yourself 1% better every day, like you say. Just commit, guys. Ownership. Tony, I'm going to unmute you this time, man, because <laughs> let's hear it. So uh, for, for me, I think the thing that I would tell people most is to um, – realize that if you've been having trouble for a long time and you really need to lose weight and you know it and you've been saying it for a long time, you just need to call Coach Joe because I realized very quickly that there were so many things that have changed in all the years that I've tried to do my dieting. And when you find out how simple it really is and how the science has changed things, it's amazing. So thank you, Coach Joe, for everything you've done. And you guys should schedule with Coach Joe if you haven't done it already. I love it. I love it. Gabe, steal the show, man. We got 30 seconds left, brother. Are you there or are you frozen? I think he's frozen because I'm not seeing it. Are you seeing him move at all? He's not moving. No, he just exited. Yeah, he probably lost service because he was driving. Anyways, um, her legs. I will keep the Zoom chat running, but let's put a quick end and put an outro to uh, everybody that tuned in on either the YouTube channel, the Facebook the podcast. I want to say I appreciate you guys. And remember, take key note. And if anybody there is on the fence and maybe they have a Facebook, hey, if you're over the age of 40, right, and you're a guy, odds are you can join a free Facebook group and get tons and tons of value to just help you succeed on your health and fitness journey once and for all. And if you guys want more tips and tricks and more information, definitely visit heartletics.com. And I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace out, Girl Scout.